Hey y'all, it's Jen and welcome back to my channel, Ifers Inklings. Today's video is another installment of the Jen's Genres Breakdown video series and we will be talking about general nonfiction books in this one. Um, so that is nonfiction that does not include memoirs, autobiographies, or biographies. So stay tuned to learn more about general nonfiction creative writing. Hey y'all, so this installment of the Jen's Genre Breakdown series is all about just creative nonfiction writing. This is general nonfiction books that do not include memoirs, autobiographies, or biographies. I've already discussed those in a separate video, and I will link that in the description below and maybe up here in the eye if I can remember. So what is creative nonfiction? Basically, what this is, um, the dictionary.com definition is prose that is written, that is based on facts, real events, and or real people, such as a biography or history. Um, there are no, there is no definition for this on literarydevices.com. I've been trying to use those two sources for definitions of each of the genres and classifications that I talk about, so we're consistent across the board. Um, but let's also talk about three characteristics of general nonfiction. These are real simple. They are written for a specific audience. It tells a real life story either of a person or an event that happened and the people that were involved in the or impacted by the event. Um, and it is written to be informative or explain a subject in a little bit more detail and kind of more layman terms than, than you would find in such as a history textbook or a college course or some kind of textbook description or account of the story. Well, some examples of books that I've read recently, I think I think I read all of these last year. I did a lot of nonfiction reading in 2019. So, um, The Children's Blizzard, which was about the 19, no, not 19, the 1888 blizzard that killed a bunch of people. Um, it was very unprecedented, unpredicted. It came in, um, they had warm temperatures in the daytime, and then by noon, the temperature had plummeted and there was a massive blizzard buried people. Um, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Um, it was very disorienting and a lot of children were killed in this because they were trying to get home from school even though they were very close sometimes to their houses but you just could not see because the wind was so so hard and the the snow was coming down so hard and it was just so dense and so thick and so disorienting. I don't know what else to say about it. Uh, but it was a very interesting account of this, of this blizzard. And it also really went into how the um, National Weather Service kind of evolved what it was before this event and how this event kind of made it evolve into what we know the National Weather Service today as. Another one that I read this year was The Library Book by Susan Olson, and this was an account of the 1985 fire in the L.A. library, and I found it very fascinating. She did a really good job writing this, too, because all the chapter headings were Dewey Decimal System based. It had books, and then like the Dewey Decimal System that, that um, corresponded with those books. It was very fascinating. Um, she was a reporter who went to, she didn't report on this event at the time, but she was a reporter and then later went into research to research this event and write about it. Um, I found it very interesting. It was an event I didn't really know a lot about and kind of the um, process of finding out what happened, what caused the fire, was it arson, if so, who did it, um, could there be other factors involved. Uh, all in, it was all in all told very well, kind of like a um, mystery that we went to solve. 
I also read Midnight in Chernobyl, and it was about the 1985 Chernobyl accident in Russia. Um, I found that to be very interesting. I've always kind of been fascinated about Chernobyl, and this book really went into details on kind of what led up to the creation of that nuclear facility and the town around it, the people, the people working there, what events led up to the failure of the reactors in the, the Chernobyl plant, and then the massive cover-up by the Russian government. Um, it was appalling and um, kind of the what what the fallout was medically, economically, um, governmentally, you know, kind of, it goes into all of that and, um, talks about what they did to try and clean it up and cover it up. And, and in that same month, in that same vein, I read, uh, The Conspiracy of Fools, which is the Enron, the it covers the Enron case with in the accounting world, and coincidentally enough, it starts out in 1985 as well. So I read three books last year, very close together, all transpiring in 1985 within weeks of each other. Weeks. It was so weird that such a coincidence. I picked those books up, um, but the Conspiracy of Fools, like I said, it talks all about the Enron. It starts with the um, conception of the company and what all led up to the ultimate failure of the company and the financial crisis that it went into and then how that financial crisis and the other companies that were kind of playing the same kind of cooking the bo financial books um, caused the major changes in the accounting world and um, oversight in the w from the government into the financial aspects um, as an accountant, I found it fascinating, but it was probably pretty dry for anybody else that's not in the accounting world. Um, and that, the final book I'm going to talk about that I've read that is falls into this general nonfiction is The Fall of the Dinosaurs, which was phenomenal. This book starts out from before dinosaurs and kind of leads up you learn a little bit about the period before the dinosaurs and then then the dinosaurs and then what led to the, or what they believe led to the um, fall of the dinosaurs and kind of a little bit into modern day life um, kind of spans all of that and I found it absolutely fascinating. As a kid, I wanted to be a paleontologist um, or and then an archaeologist and so learning about the rise and fall of the dinosaurs was so interesting and so cool to me. Highly recommend it. Very cool, very fascinating audiobook, um, especially, but I'm sure the regular book is just as fascinating. So, as you can see, there are, these five books that I talked about were very different, but they're all nonfiction, all around different events. Um, one was a nuclear power plant accident, one was a weather-related incident, one was a fire at a library, um, dinosaurs, and then one was a financial collapse and run of a company and the fallout from that. So they are, by uh, nonfiction can, can cover so many different genres. You can find a book of nonfiction on anything that you could possibly want to read about. So that leads me to what nonfiction books do I want to read in 2020? I actually am going to talk about three books. In my other videos, I really am going to try and limit it to only one book. Um, but then I'm going to talk about three of them in this one. The physical book that I have on my shelves that I want to read is Body Brokers by Ann Chaney. And this is a book about, um, well, it says Inside America's Underground, underground Trade in Human Remains. I don't know anything about this subject 
two of my really good friends read this and they were fascinated so they read it within 24 hours um just sat down and read it in one sitting because they just could not put it down it was so fascinating horrendous um and just a, something you don't think about so i'm excited to read it the other one that I really want to make sure I get to this year is The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. And this is just the story of the girls that were um, responsible for using the radium to paint on the clocks um, before they, and anything to make the, the glow-in-the-dark stuff. Um, but clocks specifically, because that the hand, the hours, you know, anyway, um, those glowed. And it was before they figured out that radium was poisonous and deadly. And then when the girls complained, they were um, disregarded and brushed aside. And it wasn't until a man came down with radium poisoning that they took a closer look and something was done about it. So um, I'm excited to get to that. It's been on my list for a while and on my radar for a while. The other one that I want to read is Far From the Tree by Andrew Solomon, and this is, it relates to families and how families can be different and how certain people inside your family may be different from everybody else in your family, um, whether that is because they were adopted or born with a um, some type of disability. Um, so I am fascinated by that because as you know, my family is got a unique situation, or some of you may know, you may not know, but I am raising my niece um, who is autistic. So this is going to be, a, I think, a very interesting book because of the situation in my own life. Um, so those are all the books about nonfiction, what nonfiction is, and books in it, it that I've read and books that I want to read that are all considered nonfiction books. So in the comments below, let me know what nonfiction books you absolutely love because I would love to check out more nonfiction books. If it is on audio, even better because I am definitely someone who likes to listen to their nonfiction books. I retain that information better that way. And I get through the book a lot quicker when I listen to it on audio. So give me your recommendations in, in the comments below because I really want to, to check out more nonfiction books. Also, be sure and let me know if you've read any of the nonfiction books that I've talked about, either the ones I've already read or the three that I want to read in 2020. And let me know what you thought about them or if you're going to be reading any of them based on what I've talked about today in this um, video. And as always, if you've enjoyed this video and you enjoy this series, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that you are enjoying it and it lets other people know that, it, you know, that people are enjoying this video and YouTube will put it out there to other people as well. Um, if you know somebody that wants, that needs some recommendations on nonfiction or kind of wants to know a little bit more about it, then be sure and share this video with them as well. Share it out on your social media. I would appreciate that. Go ahead and hit that big red button and subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell over there so you can be notified when I post new videos in this series or other content on my channel. And until next month when we have a new genre to talk about, um, also leave genre suggestions down below so I can make sure that I cover the genres that you are most interested in. Until next month, when we cover our next genre, I will talk to you later. Bye.